Hello and welcome to your $1,400 stimulus check and stimulus package update. First, I just wanted to say thank you to all of my new subscribers and existing subscribers. I don't say thank you enough, but I really, really appreciate all of you who join and just support the work that I do here. You mean the world to me and it's just amazing the, the level of support here. So let's talk a little bit about the stimulus package and what top economists are saying right now. Now that it's looking like this $1.9 trillion stimulus relief package is, is going to be passed. It, it's, it's more likely than ever. Yes, there's a few potential uh, bumps along the way. There's a few potential hiccups that we can foresee, but the odds are better than ever that this darn thing will get passed. So because of this, because the odds are so good, um, some economists are kind of coming out and giving their comments on this. And we're actually seeing more comments and concerns on this stimulus bill now than we were seeing in weeks or months prior to this. I'm always kind of looking for contrasting opinions. That way I can have a an opinion on what's going on that's most grounded in reality. I think it's really important to look at both sides of the equation. And we have some people who have talked about their concerns about this, which I appreciate. And surprisingly enough, the people that I found are on the left side of the political spectrum. So that uh, kind of even gives it a little bit more uh, validity it, it, just in these charged political times that we live in right now. So uh, we have Lawrence Summers, who is the former Treasury Secretary for Bill Clinton and was the economic advisor to Obama, who had a quote on what's going on right now. And he had said, inflationary pressures are a kind that we have not seen in a generation with consequences for the value of the dollar and financial stability. So of course, we don't like to hear that. Um, also, we have Oliver Blanchard, who's the former chief economist at the IMF, who had said there's a risk that we may overheat the economy so badly as to be counterproductive, basically put too much money into the system, it may be counterproductive. And then even the Congressional Budget Office currently sees real GDP, the gross domestic product, the, the cost of all goods to final end consumers in the country, exceeding projected output, by a wide margin, exceeding projections, even without stimulus. And they have a report saying that Biden may be pumping more money into the economy than he needs to. And I'm gonna be pre pre presenting both sides here. So just hang tight if you're like, eh, you know, I don't like what he's saying. I gotta present both sides. Um, a lot of these references are to the 70s and 80s where we saw wild inflation all over the, par all over the place. Uh, inflation peaked in 1975 at 10.1%. That is mind blowing to me. If you just think about a million dollars, all right, let's say you have a million dollars in the bank right now. You can buy a lot of stuff with a million dollars. Imagine if next year that million was only worth $900,000. Or maybe we should say $10 is only worth $9 in one year. Like if that, I mean, if that lasts for 10 years, your million dollars is basically worthless at the end of 10 years. That's a scary thought. Um, so it was only peaked that high in 1975 for one year. It fell down to about 5.9% in a few years after that. But then kind of due to some validity and in how uh, inflation was managed back then, it jumped back up to 9.6% by 1981. So the value of money from 1975 to 1981 went down dramatically. Uh, and they, they warned too that this isn't just something that uh, is like this imaginary thing that might not impact the everyday person because it could be the difference between you getting an interest, uh, an interest rate on your mortgage of you know 2.8 percent or something. Right now, I'm in the middle of refinancing my house and I'm getting quotes around that, and an interest rate on your home mortgage at like 10 percent. So it could have a huge impact on the individual as well. And uh, here's how they used to deal with it between like the 1950s and the 1970s. The Federal Reserve. Uh, aim to solve the inflation issue by just pushing for less deficit, less, less spending, um, which I, we still see a push for that now. Of course, you know, a deficit isn't inherently a good thing. And they also did so by increasing interest rates when unemployment fell. So a strong indicator of where the economy is at is the unemployment rate, even though there's debates as to how exactly accurate it is. But if, if the unemployment rate is low, generally the economy is doing pretty good. So they, they figured if the unemployed, unemployment rate is low, we should bump up interest rates. That way we can balance out uh, the good because we don't want things to be too good. And you know, then we see spikes, you know, like you, like you would see a spike in a stock price. If it goes up 100%, chances are it's not going to stay up that high. There's going to be some kind of correction with the 
United States economy as a whole, we don't want that to happen. We don't want to see huge peaks up and down. We want we want to be stable, you know, stably increasing. A little bit of inflation is good. We want to want it to be stably increasing. Well, that didn't really work so well. Um, interest rates were all over the place. Inflation was all over the place. So in later decades, they kind of shifted their focus, almost the, the opposite of what they what they did in the 1950s to the 70s. And then they focused instead on money supply and altering the money supply instead of so much interest rates. Yes, interest rates are tweaked a little bit, but they've stayed so low. There's only so much you can do, you know, bringing interest rates from half a percent down to a quarter percent. And uh, since this shift, interest rates have stayed pretty much low for like close to 40 years. And it's been near zero in, in most recent years. Also, uh, just one, one thing I wanted to point out, Charlie Munger, who's the number two at uh, Berkshire Hathaway, you know, Warren Buffett's massive uh, conglomerate. I regard him as one of like the geniuses of our time, or I mean, he's, he's very old, so maybe of his time, uh, however, you, <laughs> however you want to phrase that. But he's, he's talked many times about how we're in completely uncharted territories right now. We're in a, we're in a system that seems like it's working. Things seem like, it's almost like they seem too good to be true. We're in uncharted territories, he says. And it's, it's, we're in a situation where it's like, it, will this just work? Or do we just not see what's behind the veil? We're just not totally sure. However, the overall sentiment, you know, we have a few people who are concerned. We have people who say maybe this isn't the best idea, but the overall sentiment leans towards we're doing just fine. There's very little inflation risk. Like, I mean, we're talking five, 10% people very concerned. 90, 95%, this is the right thing to do, more spending. So I don't want to freak anyone out, uh, freak anyone out either. Uh, Wall Street for sure thinks that there seems to be very little inflation risk. I mean, we see this in the stock market. It almost seems like the pandemic never even happened. Um, and most economists, like I said, range from a little inflation risk to you know some short-term volatility on prices and inflation and interest rates. Uh, to those stating that we should just spend as much as we can because there's much more risk in not spending enough versus spending too much right now. Now, these sentiments are also held by both the heads of the Treasury and head of the Fed who feel that we just simply have better tools now to combat inflation and keep things more stable. And I've also seen reports that show the hole in the economy right now due to the pandemic and unemployment and shutdowns and things like that is actually pretty close to $1.9 trillion. So that just happens to line up pretty quickly. Of course, there's economists that put together these, you know, these funding sizes. So I'm glad to see it's lined up with something. But of course, something that always pops into my mind is we should be worried about groupthink. You know, I, I can only report on what, what I see the experts say and, you know, kind of the feel for the situation, look up some research papers, but, you know, I'm not on the ground doing the research either. There's part of me that's concerned that whenever nearly everyone agrees to one thing, it makes me worried that, that there's a fear from the people who, who think the other way, uh, a fear to speak up. And especially in a, in a politically charged environment like we're in, and in a situation where stimulus checks are so popular, I mean, we're at well over 70% of all Americans feel stimulus checks should be passed. So if you're the economist who's just against stimulus checks, you're going to be extremely un unpopular. And that's, that's a concern of mine because we want opinions on both sides. That way we can most accurately develop an opinion as to what's going on. Now, I don't necessarily think that's the case. I'm, I mean, I'm sure the tools and the systems that the, the Treasury and the Fed have um, have improved significantly from the 1970s to you know, 2021. However, we have to think too, in the 1970s, they were probably also thinking our tools are so much better than they were in the 1930s. And they probably were, but you know, now we reference to the 1970s as uh, th this abysmal time of inflation and, and craziness and monetary vol uh, values going all over the place. So we have to remember that there probably will be a point in time where we'll look back to 2021 and think, oh, we knew nothing back then. We have, we have to have that perspective. Um, so of course that, that adds a little bit of concern to me. But in summary on all this, we have people who have general concerns about what's going on, and it's great to have those people. But the majority of people, we're talking 90% plus of the experts, say we have nothing to worry about. And at the end of the day, we have to trust the experts at some regard. And obviously, something is needed to be done to get the economy back on track, not just the stock market back on track. Because if you ask the average everyday person, they are struggling more now than they were a year and a half ago. And um, you know, solutions need to be had. And 
we're looking at a situation where those solutions are closer than ever with the passage of the next stimulus bill that includes you know unemployment boosts stimulus checks food assistance rent assistance programs that are necessary to keeping things going and then hopefully we can get back up on our feet and we can you know brush ourselves off and a few years from now this will just be a distant memory we'll all be successful we'll be millionaires and we'll be good to go so that's gonna do it for today i would like to thank you for watching and i hope you have a profitable day